Hi, it's Dave, and welcome to my latest update on my electric car conversion. Um, I've been down here an awful lot in my workshop over the last couple of weeks, uh, pushing to get this thing on the road. And it is getting really close, and I keep saying that, and it's really bizarre because every hour I spend down here, I seem to generate about an hour and a half of more jobs to do. It's really weird, and I can't even explain exactly what those jobs are. But I'll go through kind of what I've been doing, what I've been up to. Um, first off, if I just under there, so the under of that archway now is all back together again because if you remember, remember from my last video I got the charging port installed. One of the big jobs actually that I suddenly realised is I hadn't put in the wiring loom for the power distribution module which is a little bit of a cock up. Um, there are two major uh, components to this which are sensors. Um, one is the sensor which goes on the main battery connector to the main batteries in the Nissan Leaf. Ow. Ow, ow, wires on the floor. Uh, main battery pack, because there's a big connector and it, it just verifies that the thing is plugged in. So that is just a, a feedback. So I've just connected that to itself uh, so the power distribution module believes it's plugged in. The other sensor is for the port to know when there's a, um, a charger plugged in. Obviously that's very important as well. It has to know when there's a charger plugged in and, uh, and uh, the charger needs to know it's plugged in as well. So I've got those fed out here if it, yeah so these go up now and through into where the charging port is so that's all connected up as well which is good all the other wires there are all to do with rapid charging and um uh, and your power 12 volts so there's a couple of 12 volts to wire up there which is that's all wired up good which is great um a lot of time has been spent on that bloody thing pardon my french so that's the front battery box um, and you'll now see that it's got some extra holes in it so these are where the compression plates and the bars go through so these will go through here and through the batteries out the other side and the compression plates crush all the batteries together not with a huge amount of force only, only about a couple of kilograms or so but just to stop the batteries from expanding when they're uh, in use um, so the compression plates are there but this has been a labour of love because I had to keep trying to test fit it in the car, so hence I've got the um, one ton crane here, which I was just lifting it in and out, putting it in place, positioning it, making sure all the, nothing was in the way, any bits of bodywork need to be cut were cut, and as you might imagine, that back and forth is pretty tricky <laughs> and takes up a lot of time. Test fitting the batteries as well, so the batteries have been in and out of the box numerous times, just checking they're all in there, and there is actually in the box as well I've now got all the padding in place so there's padding in all the places where it's needed um, you'll also notice holes in the bottom so that is for the next thing which has taken up a huge amount of time which is all these components so these are the structure that are going to hold that in the front of the car so these I've got two of these I've made are going to sit either side, actually I can go and show you in the car blah, blah. this is going to go over there and down it's going to sit on this arm here Wait a minute, if I can hit it, there, that arm there and the front of the car there and there's two of those, one for each side of the battery box then these components are going to go underneath and these holes here are matching the holes in there. They bolt underneath. Then there are holes in the side which match the holes here. And uh, so as you imagine the two things go either side. You've got the battery box in the middle. You lift the battery box into place, bolt it in and then fill it full of batteries. Uh, it has to be that way around because the box can't go in from the top. It's just too big. And obviously I can't fill it full of batteries first because it would weigh about 100 kilos. So once the box is in, then I can fill it full of batteries. Um, and as you might expect, test fitting all of that, manufacturing these um, components here, and, um, and drilling the holes in the right place, measuring, testing, refitting, testing, measuring. Oh, it's just taking me forever. Um, you, if you've seen my channel before, you'll know that fabrication is not my strong point. But um, I'm quite pleased with how these have come out. I mean, my welding's not the best, I'll, I'll admit. This is stick welding. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm getting much better. Obviously I've painted them all black now, um, but a lot of these joints are, 
well, I can't see them failing, to be honest. I know it's holding 100 kilos, but if this whole joint here, and I've tried to double weld everything, so on both sides, I've got a joint there, and then a weld right across there, weld there. You know, I've not, I've not had any of my welding fail on me. Um, so, fingers crossed that they don't. So, where am I then? Um, this lot is gonna be fitted, so I need to just do a bit of angle grinding on these to grind the paint off and angle grind in there just so there's no contaminants when I weld. Put them in, weld them on, lift the box up, bolt it in place, fill it full of batteries, and connect it up. And, oh, another important thing that I've done actually is da, 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 the inverter is now fitted permanently. So that is in there, bolted in. Um, it was in there before when you when I had the wheels spinning, but this is now in permanently. And I've started to plumb it in as well. So that's a pipe there connecting the motor to the inverter. Uh, if you've seen my channel before, I had to route the uh, other pipe. I didn't leave enough room. So I had to just knock on, drill out or cut out part of the uh, firewall, which is probably highly unrecommended. But I had to do that to get this pipe around. So I've got uh, an input and an output down there. So they're going to come around and then in here, this is where the oil coolers used to be. There's one there and one the other side of the car. Uh, I'm going to put a radiator just in one of them to begin with. And um, we'll see if that's enough, just one to keep it cool. If not, I'll put two in. I've got the original water pump from the car as well, from the, from the Nissan Leaf donor. And um, see if that, but that's, that's to be honest, I'll get it on the road first, get it moving, and then we'll get the water cooling system going. It should be fairly straightforward, to be honest. I doubt I'll even put a sensor on it. I'll just make it that when the ignition's on, it just starts churning, uh, churning around. So lots of tidying up has been done in here as well. You know, it's the, the cover of the electronics is on now. Got the cover for the inverters and electronics. These wires are loose at the moment because I've got the battery box in. But it's a lot of tidying and it's a lot of that tidying is actually what takes a lot of time as well. Um, oh, another big job is the BMS wiring is now um, under the car and uh, um, fixed into place, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's with all the other wiring under there. And actually, if I show you over here, that orange loom, um, that, is the, that is the BMS wiring in there. So if you remember my other videos again, the BMS was, oh, what is it, 70, 80 wires, thin little wires to, to, to uh, communicate the BMS battery voltages back to the BMS system. But I didn't want those under the car because um, oh, they're fragile, they were going to get damaged. So that's what that orange sheath is. It's a really quite strong, tough uh, nylon based material. Uh, the cable's inside there and then fixed underneath the car uh, from back where it's plugged into the BMS to the front where it's going to be connected up to the batteries, which obviously I'll do when the battery box is in. Um, so, as I said, things left to do are get this lot fitted, battery box up, wire it in. And I was thinking actually as well, I might do a, uh, I don't know, is it a YouTube live or something like that? I might um, book a date and time and say, right, I'm going to be online at this time. I'm going to do a live feature and, um, and get the car, put the wheels on, lower it down and actually do a live first test. Roll it out the garage, <laughs> see if it works. Um, let me know if you think that's a good idea. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not into, <laughs> into Facebook Live. I kind of just do these videos ad hoc and stick them up. But um, there we go. We are getting very close, as I keep saying. But um, I think this time I really am. Thanks for watching, guys, and um, I'll catch you all next time.